uh, hi everybody climatic events such as storms floods droughts sea level rise and wildfires as the ones the west coast of the united states has recently experienced force people to move away from their homes according to the international disaster monitor center the number of people forced to move away from their homes due to climatic events is often more than double than the number of people displaced by civil conflict. Most environmental migrants move from rural to urban areas within the borders of their countries, thereby accelerating urbanization with ambivalent economic, social, political, and environmental consequences. For instance, urbanization accelerates national and economic growth and development, but also increases poverty inequality, as it can be seen in the picture of Nairobi, where high rises in the financial district are located just four miles away from the Kibera slum. Given that the 2018 World Bank report predicts that under a business as usual scenario, Climatic events, in particular drought, will force more than 143 million people to move away within their own country's borders in Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, South Asia, and Latin America by 2050. It's important to know whether climatic changes by triggering migration to urban centers lead to social disorder and urban violence. The quest leads us to, this quest led us to several cities in Vietnam and Kenya, two countries which are highly exposed and vulnerable to climatic changes and which have witnessed large within country migration flows and fast urbanization rates over the last decades. Furthermore, since it takes two to tango, we study both environmental migrants and residents in their host cities. Starting with the urbanites, we ask, what is urbanites' predisposition toward environmental migrants? On the one hand, urbanites could view environmental migration as a form of involuntary migration that deserves protection, and hence, motivated by humanitarian concerns, uh, urbanites might welcome environmental migrants uh, to their cities. On the other hand, urbanites could view environmental migrants as competitor for jobs and public services, and hence they might not be willing to accept them in their cities. Our experimental data reveal some interesting results. While about half of the local residents perceive climatic events as a legitimate reason for migration, the other half does not. Furthermore, in both countries, the environmental region ranks at least, at best, only second among the most legitimate reasons for migrations. More importantly, urbanites tend to evaluate migrants mostly according to whether they will be able to sustain a living in the city. Hence, urbanites prefer younger, better educated migrants who possess at least some financial resources and human capital. Our findings allow for modest optimists at best. Given that most environmental migrants come from rural areas with low levels of education and modest financial resources, they are strongly dependent on the sympathy of local residents to be able to integrate into the new location. Unfortunately, such sympathy, based on the perceived climate-induced migration has been legitimate, is not widely felt by urban residents. Turning now to migrants in the urban centers who had experienced climatic events in their, or in their previous location, we examine whether rural to urban environmental migration affects migrants' willingness to join and participate in social movements, aiming at eliminating discrimination against migrants in urban areas. Given that people are attached to their places, when they are forced to leave their homes due to climatic changes, they are likely to consider themselves as uprooted, 
which cements a discourse and mid mindset of victimhood, injustice, grief, and anger. When such emotions are coupled with grievances, which people develop when they experience gradual climatic events, say a drought, and with the need to flee in order to save their lives, which is the case when people experience sudden climatic, climatic events, such as a flood, then the likelihood that environmental migrants join and participate in social movements increases. In our sample across the three surveyed sites in Kenya, Nairobi, Mombasa, and Kisumu, about a quarter of our respondents had suffered from and left due to sudden environmental events, and in particular, floods and storms. 12% had experienced and fled gradual environmental events, in particular drought, while 57% left their rural homes and moved to a city as they encountered both sudden and gradual events. Only 7% migrated within Kenyan foreign environmental reasons. Most of our respondents, about 63%, were indeed willing to participate in peaceful protest, protest rallies. However, if there was a risk of this demonstration turning violent, either because of protesters or security forces engaging with them, only 16% signaled their willingness to protest. The most engaging activity, namely membership in, move, in, in the movement, was attractive to only 15% of our respondents. About 6% in our sample were unwilling to participate in any of these three activities. Our econometric analysis shows that the impact of environmental reason of migration on social movement participation is quite noticeable. First of all, migrants who had experienced a sudden environmental event in their previous location were more willing to participate in peaceful protests in their new city of residence. In particular, the likelihood of protest participation is about eight percentage points higher than the likelihood of participation when the individuals had not experienced a sudden environmental event. Most importantly, migrants willing to participate in peaceful protest is almost 15 percentage points higher than the migrants who have not suffered from both types of environmental events before. Finally, their willingness to participate in rallies that may turn violent and also to become an active member of a migrant interest group is less strongly pronounced, but still visible present with five percentage points higher than for non-environmental migrants. We were also able to identify statistical significant effect between environmental migrants who had suffered from both events and those who had not. In particular, why the probability of participation centers around 45% when both events is set to zero, the simulated likelihood of migrants who had suffered from both gradual and sudden events to join peaceful protests converges towards around 60%. Hence, our conclusion is that the experience of environmental events does indeed drive individuals' willing, willingness to join and participate in social movements. Coming back to the question I posed at the beginning of my talk, does environmental migration lead to urban social disorder? The answer is most likely yes. Our findings thus have some serious policy implications. National and local authorities should provide immediate assistance and basic social services to environmental migrants in urban settings and facilitate permanent solutions by fostering their socio-economic and political integration and assist them in managing their long-term grievances. But most importantly, efforts should be made to avert the need for climate-induced migration in the first place by intervening at the earliest stage possible. This implies that sustainable development should strengthen the coping capacity of communities affected by climate change. 
Thank you for your attention.